What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out the underlining story of Jay Uso. This one I definitely wanted to check out. Uh, I think some of you guys uh, told me to uh, give this a look, man. Jay's story arc in this whole bloodline situation is actually played out very, very well. Um, it's crazy that we can say two years later into the bloodline story, he has become more relevant again. You know, he's become one of the focal points once again. It started with Jay, and now it's coming back around and potentially maybe ending with Jay, depending on how things play out at Elimination Chamber and what may happen at this year's WrestleMania. So, hey, I, I can say this. I don't know if this was long-term booking in the sense of what they plan to happen, but, hey, it's working. So, I definitely got to check this story out. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel, man. Shout out to Superkick Studios for always the dope videos. And let's get right into this. <clears throat> What are you going to do, huh? I hate you! Why can't I be the one to provide for the family, Oos? You know what they say when they see me, Oos? Which one are you? Good storytelling, bro. Good storytelling, good, good acting, selling it. For the past three years, WWE has been telling the story of Roman Reigns and his dominance, his family coming together to rule the WWE and Reigns achieving his full potential as the final boss of the company. But now you look at it and you wonder, is the story really being told his or has this been about Jey Uso the entire time? Manipulated, led to believe that he's doing the right thing, remaining under the ironclad and tyrannical rule of Roman and forgetting everything that he once fought for and the adulation he once desired. A guy who just wanted to be his own man, intent on proving his worth, chastised and nearly disowned by his own cousin for simply challenging his status. When Roman returned, it was under a different persona calling himself the head of the table, insinuating that no one was better than him in the NOIE family, that he was the top guy and it had to remain like that for the family to thrive and survive. That's also when Jay's twin brother Jimmy was out of action with a knee injury, leaving Jay all alone. These two cross paths on the SmackDown after payback, and it was there where Jey Uso, the cousin of Roman Reigns, got put into mm -hmm. a fatal four-way number one contenders match for a shot at the Universal title at Clash of Champions. Before the match, Roman told Jay that his brother would win. Help, he'll win anything. Let's see if you can get one on your own this time. And from the very first night, the mental games with Jay pitting him against his twin were underway. At the end of the night, he did it. He won the chance to fight the family's crown jewel at Clash of Champions. The next week, Jey Uso's story started to be told to everyone, and it was simple. He also wanted to make the family proud. He told us that he was the third of three, born nine minutes after his brother Jimmy and a few months after Roman, who is his cousin. For years, Jey Uso had been nothing more than the second half of the Uso twins, one of the most innovative and exciting <coughs> tag teams mm -hmm. in WWE history. But here he would break free from the shadow of his twin, which, as he told us, was something that was a blessing and a burden. Roman told Jay that this was his moment to take a huge payday home to be in the main event, but at the pay-per-view, it was going to be just like when they were kids. He was going to whoop Jay's ass, it was all love, and the title was going to stay around Roman's shoulder for the family to stay where it was. Jay got left high and dry when he challenged Corbin and Sheamus to a tag match. He was a little immature, a little too sure of himself, but when Jay fought two guys on his own, he proved to Roman that he could win the match himself. Roman came down and took the glory for himself after it was Jay who did all the work. And from here we started to see the slow seeds of manipulation. From the moment Jay raised Roman's hand, Roman pulled it away because he saw Jay as lesser than him. Or maybe he knew that from a young age, once Jay is intent on something, he won't say die. So he had to find a way to have Jay fight with him rather than against him. The 40 year legacy of the Anawaii family- And what I want to pause and make a note here that he's already mentioned. It's the manipulation. Roman, this entire arc, has just been Roman manipulating his family to pretty much have his back. He cares about them, but only to the extent of making sure that he's at the top. If any time they feel like they want to challenge him, that's when he, he tries to, 
tries to uh, manipulate them or gaslight them into realizing that that's not best for the family. And I've always loved his character in that sense of that's how he gets people to have his back. Straight manipulation. Lee wasn't Jay's to take. It was all about Roman, and Jay was constantly reminded of that. We saw how far the bloodline spanned from Yokozuna to The Rock to Umaga to mm -hmm. Jay's dad, Rikishi. The whole world was told that Roman's right to be at the top was his birthright since the day he was born. Well, Jay was beneath him in the family, in real life, and in the WWE. That just naturally, he was never thought of as the guy. In the living room, on the football field, and in the ring, Roman was always superior, and these two were cousins who may as well be brothers. The next week in another tag match, Jay made the pin right in front of his cousin, not allowing him to take credit for another hard-fought week. Roman showing his true colors while Jay's back was turned, smiled to his face, and frowned behind his back. Mm -hmm. We were told that whenever Jay would see Roman at family gatherings, it was always Roman sitting next to the Chiefs. Everyone believed in him while Jay was just kind of there like an abandoned child. The elders saying that from a young age, it was always Roman. He was always a winner. He was always the best, that he was destined for greatness, and on the other hand, Jay wasn't held on that same pedestal and never really got given the respect that Roman had without even working for it. It's important to remember who Jay was at this time. He behaved like a petulant child. He didn't think before he spoke. He was easily triggered. Emotions got the best of him. And on screen, they displayed him as someone who needed to clean up his act. We started to get to know the trials and tribulations of Jay after Roman told him that he'd give the title to Jay, but Jay wouldn't know what to do with it. He didn't understand the responsibility and weight of being the face of the WWE. <clears throat> How could he? After all, he's always been a twin. His entire life, he depended on someone else. Roman berated Jay for being born with the second half like he chose to, telling him that it'll never be him. Jay simply asked, why can't I? What if you're wrong? This was someone who had heard this for years. He had a bit of an identity problem. He wanted to prove that the family may have appointed Roman as the guy, but he could do it too and someone could be better than Roman. Everything that was on Jay's mind came out that night. He told everyone that he'd been battling this his entire life. Roman reigns on a... And this storyline carried us through, um, through the pandemic era. This was so good. I can only imagine how this would have been in front of our audience and the crowd chanting for Jay. That would have been awesome. This was good. This is this is where the moniker of main event Jay came from. This was fantastic. We may see glimpses of that relatively soon. Pedestal. Meanwhile, when Jay Uso walks <clears throat> into the room, they ask, which, which one are you? Yep, which Telling one are you? the entire world of his personal struggles of being a twin. That he'd never really been seen as his own person, always attached to someone else, and unable to be identified by many. Roman told him that he fed the entire family with what was in his hands, and Jay was going to take a payday, take an ass whooping, but never take his place at the head of the table. This showed you that Roman was intent on keeping his spot and nothing else. At Clash of Champions, Jay didn't say die. He took punishment, but he just kept coming back for more. He wouldn't shut up and take the loss. Even when Roman went low, it wasn't enough. Jay was asked by Roman to acknowledge him as a tribal chief, do it now and this was over, but Jay just said no, not today. A switch then went off in Roman. He viciously beat down Jay, mm -hmm. told everyone that the whole family's watching, your children are watching, that he'd been whooping Jay's ass like this their entire life. That was the underlying story that this had been happening their entire lives, that Jay had always challenged Roman and could never shut him up. Jay wanted to stop the egomaniac before it got out of hand and he knew that it would get out of hand. He didn't quit. Out comes his injured twin brother to throw in the towel but Jay refused to say die, refused to lose to the man who's the reason he's been looked down on his entire life. Just kept saying, don't do it. And when he couldn't take his twin's pain, Jimmy had no choice but to this throw in the so towel. Good Family didn't bro. matter at that point. Jimmy acknowledged Roman, but Jay didn't. It ended like it always did, with Roman on top while the Usos couldn't do anything but watch. Paul Heyman officially declared Roman the tribal chief, but he said that he wanted to hear that from the one man who didn't acknowledge him. Jimmy did, but Jay didn't. Jay said that he was ready to go to war that night and Roman told him that he wasn't proud of what he did and also told him that he loves Jay more than his own brother does. 
Instead of giving Jay props for what he did at the show, he berated him and abused him. He told him that he embarrassed the entire family. Rain spun Jay's not quitting as disrespect to him, when in actuality, Jay just wanted to be the guy. And Roman, seeing yet so another opportunity to embarrass his cousin, him, gave Jay a title match without him even asking for it. This time, he wanted to embarrass him in a place... This was good. This? It's... I remember at the time, I was like, I don't know if this needs a Hell in a Cell, but it still worked because of how personal it was. It wasn't like a blood feud. Well, technically it was, but it wasn't like hatred involved. Like, this needs to be a match to finally end a feud. But I love the storytelling in this. This was great. This was so damn good, bro. So that's when I knew, okay, we're we're on a we're on a ride when it comes to this whole Roman Reigns thing. Cause they could have messed up his heel turn, but they oh this was fantastic, bro. Where Jay couldn't run or hide or be saved by his twin, and that was inside Hell in a Cell in an I quit match. Jay was then told by AJ Styles that Jimmy was the better athlete, and again, a fuse went off inside of him. Roman told Jay that he loves him, that he's embarrassing them and told him that he'd never take his place or hurt him. He consistently just asked Jay, why are you trying to take my place? Gave Jay a chair, said, if you don't love me, you might as well hit me. That showed the mind games that Roman was playing. The rage came out two shows before mm -hmm. Hell in a Cell, and we started to see that this wasn't about blood or respect. This was about Roman emotionally draining Jay and bringing him to his side. Roman, out of jealousy, knew that maybe someone can take his spot. Roman said that he was going to make Jay quit, and once that happened, he was going to make him fall in line, and Jay would take orders from him. If he couldn't, he and his brother, his wife, his children, everyone was out of the family. That they'd leave Jay high and dry, and that they'd turn their back on him. So Jay had everything to fight for. Being put through mental turmoil, being abused by Roman, and threatened to be excommunicated from his own family. Heyman said that when Jay loses, he becomes nothing more than an indentured servant. Those are his consequences. He'll do exactly what Roman says. Roman in this match just toyed with Jay, but again, yep. Jay didn't ever say die or ever say those two words. Roman kept telling him, I don't want to go here, I don't want to do this to you. Jay brought in a leather strap and unleashed his rage and years of pain onto Roman. All the this years where so he had good. no choice but to just look up as this guy that everyone thought was a god. But like an authoritative father disciplining his child, Reigns went to work with that same strap. Yeah. Roman smiling at his cousin's pain after telling him that he didn't want to do this and that he loved him. Jay choking Roman with a strap. Roman saying that he can't be held responsible if Jay didn't quit. And Jay not quitting set something off in Roman. Jay mm -hmm. laid motionless, didn't say I quit. He didn't even say no. It was complete silence because of the beatdown he had taken. With more silence, Reigns <laughs> grew more and more angry towards his younger cousin, wedging his head between the ring post and steel steps this and hitting a so drive butt. Even the crazy. ref telling Roman, this is your cousin, but he didn't care about who was on the other side. All he wanted was acknowledgement. Roman was pissed that Jay even dared to question the man who's been crowned the head of the table for years. He took the ref out because he just had to hear those words to feed his ego, saying, now I look bad, what am I supposed to tell my children? And from there, rage took over. With Jay motionless, Roman positioned steel steps over his own blood's head, telling him that since we were kids, you've known I was better. We're 35 years old, and you're still testing me. This told us that Jay had always challenged Roman, and that didn't sit well with him because he believed that he deserved so the respect regardless. Good, so Roman, not getting what he wanted, was about to drop steps on Jay's head, but out came his injured twin brother to shelter him from being hit in the head, telling Roman that this was Josh. They were family. This was Josh laying in the middle of the ring. Roman's selling this. I mean, everybody's selling this to, like, the ump degree. This is this is when I was like, I'm I'm here. I'm invested. I'm invested. Oh, this is so good. And Rain starts crying. Rain says he doesn't even know who he is anymore. When Jimmy extends his hand, he took it, locked him in a guillotine, and Jay, to save his twin brother, had no choice but to say I quit. Brothers who had shared every moment since their first breath, and Jay had to say I quit. Not because he lost the match but because his own blood was used as a pawn in Roman's game. Uh -huh. It took his own brother being choked out for Jay to quit. So here, did Roman really care about the family because he attacked both of them and showed no mercy while doing so? 
Or was it Jay, the one who really cared about the family because he saved his brother? Jay was in tears that night, and it happened to him again. The Usos were of lower standing to anything Roman could do. He was crowned as the head of the table, while Jimmy and Jay were peasants who only sat at that table in pity. Those were his true colors. Jay and his brother couldn't do anything but watch as the elders put a lay around Roman's neck, and he was crowned as the head of the table and he and his brother were simply nothing more than members of the family, simply mm -hmm. followers. Roman again using any means necessary to keep his spot and his standing with the family. Again, always below him. That's all Jay ever wanted was to show the family that he could do it, that someone <laughs> is as good as this guy. But whenever Jay came close to doing it, Roman would pull off something underhanded. Jay saved his brother. Jay was the one who really cared about the family, but Roman only cared about being known as the top guy. Only mm -hmm. cared about the attention, the recognition, feeding his ego, and he manipulated the people that he claimed to love to get what he wanted. And This is the character we've always wanted from him. And I love it. it it's fucking fantastic. I know some people have felt like his title reign has been too long. And I can agree with that at certain points, but this makes sense. He is honestly, if you want to be honest, he's been carrying the company for a very long time, you know, and it's just been recently that there's been other people that are now gaining that mega popularity in like Sami Zayn and like uh, um, Cody Rhodes. So, hey, I, this is this is cool. I'm going back down memory lane. Um, this whole situation is fantastic. And from here, Jay became exactly what Heyman said, a servant, Roman's right-hand man, because through manipulation, Jay was told, if you don't fall in line, we'll all turn our backs on you. The elders will forget about you. Your children will be embarrassed. Your wife will be embarrassed. You're going to leave a membership into wrestling's most dominant family behind, and you have no one to blame except for yourself. In reality, Jay wasn't leaving anything behind. Roman was just trying to turn Jay to his side. On mm -hmm. national television, he was crying, saying to Roman that you didn't beat me because he didn't. Roman manipulated his environment and simply told Jay to accept membership into the family. With Jay saying that that was a snake move, just like when we were kids. So that told us that this wasn't the first time that Roman had cheated. You saw the turmoil that Jay was facing. This was 35 years of frustration coming to the forefront and the battle was always Roman. He always found a way to spin things in his favor and paint Jay as the bad guy even though he really wasn't, never giving him a fair shot. Told him that if he doesn't fall in line, he's out of the family. He told Jay that he just couldn't do anything. Jay in tears literally screamed, I hate you. Uso didn't want to lose so another good. battle to the guy who's always been handed everything, always entitled just so like he good, was now. Bro. But again, just like when they were kids, he couldn't do anything because Roman went to depths that Jay just didn't want to go to. He didn't want to use his own family because he actually cares about them. At the end of the night, Jay had his emotions toyed with so much, he couldn't break free on his own. Instead, he went back to that same place and that was standing behind Roman. Now out to prove that he was loyal to him and the family. Roman didn't care about that. He just needed protection. He conditioned Jay to believe in a message that was non-existent. From here, main event Jay Uso was born. Mm -hmm. He said that he understood now. He was going for the validation of Roman, something he said that he never seeked, but he had his head messed with so much, he felt obligated to get. From here, Roman didn't let him do anything without his permission. He controlled his every move, pulling an invisible string behind his back, making Jay his puppet. Mm -hmm. When Jay tried to do an interview, Roman said, you out here trying to tell your story or something? Basically, Roman trying to suppress everything before it gets out. Maybe Jay was going to tell us that there is more to this story than we know. Through it, he just kept being told that Roman loved him. But what kind of love was a cousin who only used you to make their opponents weaker, to handle their dirty work so that Facts. they could reap the rewards and gain even more standing in the family? The same respect that Jay wanted his entire life. It took a while, but Roman slowly shaped Jay into his vision of the ideal servant, consistently chastising and belittling him until he changed his attitude to someone who was happy about life, to someone who immediately became triggered when anything happened to his leader, because that was the message that he was force-fed by Roman, that mm -hmm. only Roman and the protection of him matters. Consistently gaslit to do things he didn't want to do, but now he answered to his cold-blooded cousin, 
who painted what was happening as beneficial for Jay, mentally, emotionally, and physically abusing him. Through it, Jay Uso became main event Jay Uso, yep. but mainly he'd become a pawn in Reigns' game to stay and remain at the top. Jay became brainwashed that Roman's message was the right one. He became unawarely loyal to Roman and failed the mission that he was once on, to the point where when his brother came back from injury, he told him to basically bow his head to Roman, the same guy he did that to inside of Hell in a Cell. When Jimmy refused, it was Jay who was at a crossroads, mm -hmm. but because he knew that there was no point in fighting, he continued to tell Jimmy to give it up and just acknowledge Roman. Jay told Jimmy that it was a connection with the family, but it was a connection that Roman really never had in this story. When Jimmy refused to bow down to the same man who had been tormenting his brother, it was his brother who basically told him, Hey listen, there's no other way. His way is the right way. Jay already fought that battle and he knew that it- And I love this. Once Jimmy got involved, the dynamic was definitely starting to switch. I was enjoying where things were going with this, man. Ah. This is, this is, bruh, we are, we are witnessing something great here. When it's all said and done with this, when this whole tribal chief bloodline situation finally ends, we can finally say for the first time in many, many years, we had a story, a storyline that started from like the pandemic era all the way to whenever it ends, maybe at this year's WrestleMania and just look back at just what happened in that time period awesome this twin shouldn't and couldn't maybe he was protecting him from the same mental anguish that roman put him through jimmy stood up for himself against roman but <clears throat> roman again said to jay that i love your brother too using him as a messenger to help jimmy buy into roman's propaganda but the key here was jimmy when he came back he reminded jay that you weren't gonna say i quit until the guy you're standing behind choked me out Mm -hmm. On one side, he was being told by his cousin that he loves him. And on the other side, it was his brother telling him the exact same thing. But the only one telling the truth was Jimmy. Roman used that same tactic on Jimmy that he did on Jay. Threatened to take him out of his own family. And Jay, almost like it was programmed in his head because he'd been brainwashed, told Jimmy that that's our cousin. Show him respect. The same respect that Roman beat out of Jay. Jay was now spreading that same message because Roman had programmed it into his mind. At one point, Roman even called Jay Jimmy to bring back that deep-rooted anger that mm -hmm. Jay was never seen as his own person. Jimmy even flat out said that Roman was jealous that they could represent the family too. And that's exactly what this story is. Reigns then took this and told Jay... Why is he putting you in the middle of me and him and making you out to be the bad guy? And Jimmy then said the same thing about Roman that Jay did. That he'd been pulling this BS since they were kids, using and abusing whatever was in his path. Roman was able to manipulate Jimmy saying that he's the one screwing Jay over and to make things right, Jimmy finally gave in. From here, both twins did whatever was asked of them, like robots programmed to take a command. Mm -hmm. What was once main event Jey Uso again regressed into a tag team wrestler and a follower in Roman's bloodline. Jay became attached to Roman and his message, a message he rebelled against, but like someone who got <laughs> abused, he just kept coming back for more because he was conditioned to believe something, consistently helping him retain his championship, doing his dirty work while he was relaxing at home, but still not getting the recognition that he wanted. As the bloodline grew with Solo Sokoa, they never asked any questions, never questioned the direction of what they were doing. From 2021 and into 2022, they did whatever Roman asked them to do. And then mm -hmm. things changed. Sami Zayn entered the fold and freshened up the bloodline angle, similar to how Jay's attitude originally was. And this was probably the best thing, because the bloodline angle was kind of getting stale once Sami Zayn got involved. And at first, it was, you know, it was supposed to be taken as a joke, but then it started getting over to the point where it, where it is now. And this really was good because Jay wasn't rocking with Sammy for the longest time. Everybody else was cool with him being around. It was Jay that was always was giving him the problems until Jay finally came around and, and actually embraced Sammy. Oh, this is... This is fantastic. He was was the behavior of Sami Zayn. Overexcited, not self-aware, not really seeing what was happening to him. And Jay told Sami the same things that he was told by Roman, that he needed to start pulling his weight. 
Sammy did everything to endear himself to Jay, but Jay was always skeptical of him. Jimmy, Roman, and Solo were cool, Jay not so much because Sammy received love from Roman immediately, the same love that he didn't get. Jay had been led to believe that it's hard to earn standing into the family and when this outsider came in and got in no problem, that really bugged him. When Zayn started to work his way into the family, it bothered Jay that if it was him in Zayn's position, Roman would have beat him and toyed with his emotions. You could see it, Jay had been fed this message and that message all of a sudden changed because it was non-existent. Roman was just using Sammy too. Zayn was the guy though who always stood up for Jay. No one else in the family did because they were scared of Roman. Yep. When Jay said, I don't give a damn what the tribal chief said, you could see those shackles slowly coming off and his true feelings coming mm -hmm. out. Sammy though bailed him out and saved him from the wrath of Roman. At Survivor Series when Sammy showed his allegiance to the bloodline, Jay finally became a supporter of him because he realized, all right, this guy is really here for us. Jay finally had someone who was Great actually a friend and not just someone who abused him. These two became really close until Sammy's allegiance started to get questioned by Roman. It was Roman Reigns versus Sammy's best friend, Kevin Owens, at the Royal Rumble. After Fantastic. the match, the bloodline laid a vicious beating onto Fantastic. Owens to see if Sammy would snap and where he'd go. Sammy then decided that he wanted to stand against Roman. He couldn't see this happen to his friend. The bloodline then proceeded to beat the hell out of him, except for Jay. He leaves the ring because Sammy was the one who saw the good in him, even though he was skeptical on him the entire time. Mm -hmm. He always had Jay's back. Jay genuinely started to love Sammy like a brother, even though he wasn't. Through his goofiness and everything in between, he endeared himself to Jay. You can hear Jimmy go, you say you love him like a brother. Nah, I'm your brother. Jay hasn't mm -hmm. touched Sammy. He leaves the ring and he walks up the ramp. Jay's crying because he really trusted Sammy and he felt betrayed. Jay even saved him from being kicked out of the group earlier in the mm -hmm. week. And again, Jay mentally felt like he had no one again, but at the same time walked out on his own blood. He felt pain when Sammy hit his cousin, but maybe Sammy was just the guy to expose the first crack. Sammy yep. did what Jay couldn't. Jay fell in line to Roman because he had no choice. He couldn't stand up to him because he wasn't mentally strong enough to take being disowned. Jay knew that the guy he's standing up with doesn't really care about him, but this outsider, this guy who, forget family, wasn't even born in the same country as him, <laughs> was the only guy who truly ever stood up for him. When two years previous, he was bullied and ridiculed for standing up to that same threat. It only took someone else to realize it. Jay developed this conditioning to believe what he was fed by Roman and never dared to challenge him. He fell in line and went back to being exactly what Reigns berated him for, a bona fide tag team wrestler, under the impression that he was serving the family, but he was just shunned aside for Roman to build his group and continue his rule at the top of the Anawai family. Jay just wanted that same treatment. He just wanted to make the family proud by showing everyone that even though you gave Roman the keys to the car first, I could drive better than him. This is an underlying story about a conflicted individual, someone who wanted to break free and become his own person, but when he was starting to, his own cousin used mind games, his own brother, and his years of privilege against him to pull him right back to square one, to stand behind Roman and be his right hand man at every turn, and if he even dared to question Roman, then he was the one who was at fault, and he was the one who was wrong. When someone dared to question Reigns' status, he lashed out on his own cousin and we were told that Reigns had been calculated like this for years. Being put through mental turmoil, being abused by Roman and threatened to be excommunicated from his own family. Sami Zayn may as well have been the wake up call Jay needed to remember how close he was in 2020. Mentally, physically, emotionally drained is Jay Uso. So I end the video the same way I started it. Is this story really about Roman reaching his peak? Or is this about Jay Uso rising right back up again, conquering all after the pain he's been put through? Roman knew that it was better to have Jay behind him than against mm -hmm. him, that someone could actually take his place. Jay wanted to prove that even though your family might have an idea of who their choice is, you can rattle the cage and put yourself right up there. You can do it, but the tyrannical cousin wore him down. Maybe for two years, Jay has hated everything he's become. When those shackles finally started to come off, Roman put them right back on and tighter than ever. Hey, this was a great, great uh, video, man. Definitely enjoyed this. I love the, the aspects of what he was, you know, kind of 
piecing together this whole Jay and Bloodline storyline, man. And I think Sammy is the cause of the descension of the Bloodline. It starts with him. Now, granted, I still do believe Jay will fall in line because it just it makes sense. Jay will screw over Sammy to once again show his allegiance to the Bloodline. But there's still going to be some cracks there. It's not going to be as once it was. I can feel like they're 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 setting it up to the Bloodline's downfall. And I think the Bloodline's downfall starts with Roman Reigns berating. And then it starts with maybe the well, the Usos losing the tag team championships. That, that can be a, a situation where that happens. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. But we can say Sami Zayn is the first person to really find the cracks in the armor. Because once everyone's gone and Roman's by himself, that's when we finally see the moment where finally Roman gets the throne. And I'm looking forward to this story being told. I'm very interested to see what they do with uh, Cody as well. I think, personally, Sammy should be involved in the destruction of the bloodline. I think it makes sense. Uh, I, I think you can have a situation where maybe somebody does try to interfere in the main event match and Sami Zayn is the one that helps, you know, take care, you know, whatever obstacle is thrown in Cody's way. There has to be some type of assistance for Cody because Cody can't do this alone. Everyone's tried to do it alone and they failed. And maybe he realizes that in the weeks going forward because the one thing that Cody doesn't have right now is backup. Roman has all the backup in the world. So it's going to be interesting to see how this play out. But I do think if you want, want Sammy to be in some type of involvement in the main event scene <clears throat> outside of the tag uh, tag team scene, I think he'd be, I think he's the catalyst to get everyone to separate from Roman and maybe be the, the person that can help uh, Cody Rhodes retain. So, well, not retain, uh, become the new champ. So comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this video as much as I did? Because I definitely did, man. And uh, let me know where you think uh, uh, Jay Uso's loyalty is going to lie. Uh, online when it comes to uh the elimination chamber pay-per-view but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k and i am still you know the speed of youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace